Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Videos. Always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm going to give you a spoiler free review of War on Geminar, aka Isekai no Sukishi Monogatari, uh, a recent series, uh, the most recent series actually in the Tenchi Moyo franchise universe multiverse thing. Uh, franchise going back to 1990, actually. Uh, fortunately, this is pretty self-contained. Indeed, whereas Tenchi deals with a modern teenager sucked into a kind of a sci-fi universe, um, War on Geminar starts in a fantasy world and then shows as a modern teenager kind of transplanted into that. So you get a more self-contained story than you get in a lot of other Tenchi stories. Now that said, War on Geminar has the same kind of science fantasy feel to it that Tenchi does. There are floating view screens and giant uh, earthmote battleships and cool tech like that. Moreover, it brings to the foreground a, a technology that's been in the background of a few other Tenchi works, giant robots. That's right, this is a Tenchi Moyo mecha series. Now, this OVA is set on Geminar, bet you guessed that one, uh, which is this fantasy world where the primary weapon of war are these uh, giant suits of armor called sacred mechanoids. Uh, moreover, the gender balance of pilots has shifted such that there are very few men and a lot more women. Uh, this means that uh, men's DNA is very valuable for keeping on the, uh, the, the bloodline of pilots. Now, the protagonist is a relative of Tenchi, actually, from the original Tenchi series, um, who is brought to this world and quickly surrounded by lots of cute girls who um, want his DNA, and you can imagine how they want to get it. Fortunately, the series maintains the same kind of light sexual undertones of the rest of the Tenchi franchise. While there are plenty of bath scenes and Gynax bounce, uh, none of the characters are seriously trying to drag each other into bed. Uh, it's more this, um, you know, light element that comes back to the series every so often. Now, the animation here is by one of the divisions of AIC, the studio that's done all of Tenchi uh, animation. The animation quality varies quite a bit from episode to episode, and it remains effective but unremarkable throughout. Um, now, in a lot of these series, either the characters or the mecha will get uh, more attention than the other. Not so in Geminar, actually. You get uh, some um, exciting character animation and some exciting mecha animation, but neither outshines the other. Fortunately, the animators do focus on character expression, so there are very few art mistakes on that level, and the characters do always have emotion on their faces. Uh, there's very little of that sort of dull standing around that you get in a, a lot of, of anime series. Uh, there's usually something going on on the characters' faces. Now, I did find the plot very, very slow at times. Sometimes whole episodes pass with no effective plot development. The shots are paced deliberately, uh, never too fast, certainly, sometimes a bit too slow. Basically, we just spend a lot of time watching Kenshi integrate into the society. They really really get that down. Now, of course, the Tenchi franchise lives and dies on viewer identification with the characters, whether you like watching these characters interact. Uh, Kenshi is surrounded by some refreshing variations on standard anime archetypes, including a fiery red-headed tsundere pilot girl, a 12-year-old energetic princess with way too many devious plots, a haughty lowly princess, a shy and bashful bodyguard, a cheerful engineer with sort of twin tails, a bitter Magane, an interesting twist, a sexy curvy dark elf princess, and a completely insane bloodthirsty pilot. Imagine Asuka on her worst day. Now one nice thing about this series is that different girls are interested in Kenshi for different reasons. Uh, some appreciate his thoughtfulness, um, some like his pilot skills, and some of them are touched by him. In one scene, um, we see that they are, in some cases, truly touched by him. He's very good at massage. Unfortunately, the dialogue is almost entirely forgettable, except for a few scenes that were very powerful that I won't spoil here. Uh, the dialogue almost completely is just there to move the plot forward. A few characters do have their own ways of speaking, particularly the princesses usually use the royal we, but in general, there's very little difference between how characters speak. Let me talk about the world uh, again for a second here. Um, one thing that can be off-putting for some people is the fact that uh, Geminar operates according to its own set of rules, its own technology, things like that. And this is never like outright explained. No one says, here's how the giant robots work. 
or here's why we have giant earth moat ships. Uh, they just are and are there. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is much more realistic. You know, nobody sits down and says, this is a car, and here's an co internal combustion engine, and here's why all that works. Um, and again, fo some folks find that difficult to get into when they're just things that are there and that do the things they do. Now, kudos to the writers for the fact that um, they establish the parameters of this technology early on, and they very rarely introduce anything that suddenly changes that midway through. So there's no... Um, you know, they don't suddenly introduce a mecha where, you know, ha-ha, you can't possibly defeat me because just everything you do suddenly bounces off me. Um, there are occasionally uh, mecha with unusual properties, um, but it's, it's a matter of, of, of operating them. In that way, it's very like Gundam, actually, where you'll have the occasional um, uh, you know, new weird prototype suit uh, or uh, new advancement in technology, uh, which makes it much more powerful and much more effective, uh, perhaps but nothing is invulnerable. Now, interestingly, I listened to the Japanese dub for the first half of the series and the English dub for the second. I actually preferred the English dub for a couple of the characters, particularly uh, Sheremy Lei, who does WoW, and um, uh, Monica Rial's Doll. You know, it's true. War on Geminar does feel like a Gundam series. Um, characters shout their philosophies, philosophies at each other during battle. Um, there's uh, even this, this interesting little subplot, which I'm not gonna spoil. Um, dealing with pilots and what they're going through. Um, I really like that a lot. Now, there are some other very interesting elements which I don't want to spoil here and I actually do want to do a digging deeper about. Uh, in the meantime, War on Geminar is a fantasy world with giant robots with a uh, main character surrounded by cute girls with actual personalities. Cool. 